Hello and welcome back to today's video. In today's video, we'll be learning how to create this kind of drawings inside Annex. Now we are going to learn about how to read this kind of drawing first of all, and then how to create this kind of drawing. Now this is a video which is a part of video series which is related to uh, technically creating you know you know different set of videos inside Annex. So yeah, in this particular case, we are going to learn about this particular part which is known as cap. Now this particular part looks a little complex and if you try to read it and if you try to understand it, there are a few things which might disturb you in terms of, you know, understanding the drawing. So let us try to create this drawing in the first place and let us try to understand how exactly this kind of drawings can be created. Now as you can clearly see over here from the top view, this is in the form of an arc. So this is not going to be straight, it's going to be actually in the form of an arc. Now from the front view, we can also understand that this is a kind of a hump which is created over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give priority to the front view and going to create this particular diagram from the entire front view. So let us start creating this particular diagram first. For that we are going to start NX okay, or any respective software if you are using and then we are going to click on new to create a new part file. Now remember in NX if you are starting a new part file it is very important to provide a location and a proper name and if you want to save the file. But here I don't want to save the file so I'm not going to define any proper location or name. I'm just simply going to click OK. So my part file creation will be started. Now, once I'm inside a part environment of NX, then I have to decide, you know, what exactly I have to create and how exactly I have to create. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to create a new sketch. So here to create a new sketch, I'm going to click on sketch command and then I'm going to click on this particular front plane. So here I'm selecting the front plane and clicking OK. Now, once I select the front plane, here I have to now decide what kind of sketches I need to make, you know, what type of sketches exactly I need to make. So let us try to understand this sketch first. Okay. Now here we can clearly see the radius for this part is given. Okay. And I'm going to believe like this is the point where I'm going to keep my origin. Okay. So let us try to create this particular circle first of radius 48. So here I'm going to go here and try to create a circle from the origin. And the radius is going to be 48. So if I'm providing a dimension, the software is automatically going to provide diameter to the circle. If you are curious to know like how to provide radius in place of a diameter, you can go to rapid dimension and here in method, you can change to radial. And once you change to radial, here it will automatically pro provide the radius. And then you can check the value for radius. So here the radius value is set to 48. So now what I can do is I can simply double click on the radius value and set 48 over here and I can click OK. So here my circle of radius 48 is perfectly created. Now obviously this is what we have over here is not a complete circle. What we have here in the first place is uh, you know a particular arc of radius 48 after which we have few set of lines. So let us now try to model these lines and then try to understand how exactly these lines are going to you know be there inside this particular drawing. So first of all I need to model this horizontal line then a vertical line of 12 for vertical line, I know the dimension, but for horizontal line, I need to figure it out. Okay. And then after that, again, we need to model a horizontal line, which is even longer than this horizontal line. Okay. And then finally, we have to model this vertical line. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go back inside NX. I'm going to click on the profile command. Now I know that one thing that it is not exactly in the right side of the circle. It is somewhere on the upper part of the circle. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start my line from here, somewhere inside the circle on the top right side. I'm going to create three lines, one, two, three, okay, and four. Let's say for example, this many lines I have created. Now I obviously know that this line is going to touch the circle. So I'm going to use the trim tool to get rid of this extra part of the line. Now, once I've done that, I want to mirror this geometry exactly on the other side. So I'll click on mirror. I'll choose connected curve. Okay. And then I'll select this horizontal line, any one horizontal line and the entire part is now selected. Now here in center line, I'm going to select my Y axis and I'm going to click OK. So here now it is mirrored. Now I'm going to provide the set of dimension, which I'm supposed to. For example, here, I know that the length of this particular part is going to be 12. So here I'm going to go for smart dimension and going to select this line. Okay, and make sure here it is set to inferred again if you have set it to radial, otherwise the selection is not going to happen. So here I'll set this to 12. Okay, so now this is defined. Now let us try to figure out other dimensions as well. So I know that this particular bottom line is of length 16 and it is going to start from 8 mm above. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to define this particular dimension of 16 and then drag the entire thing up. Okay, as you can see, I'm dragging the entire thing up just by dragging the top horizontal line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide this gap that is the distance between this point and the origin as 8 mm. So here I have successfully defined that as well. 
Now I know the overall width of this thing is 56. So here I'm going to define from this point till here the overall width of 56. So once I'm defined with that, now I need to only define the overall width for this part. Now let us see the diagram and try to understand what will be the overall width. Now I want to figure out the width from here till here. Okay, the overall width. Now technically it is in a form of an arc. Okay, so figuring out the radius of this arc will probably give me the overall width. Now why I'm saying figuring out the radius of the arc will give me the overall width because it is starting from the center. So from the center till this particular point, the radius is 54. And because it is a radius, it is going to be same all around. So what I can do is I can technically define the distance from the center till this particular point as 54. Okay, and I'm good to go. So here I'm defining this particular dimension as 54 and other dimensions are all defined. And just for a check, we have a fully constrained sketch. Once we have this, then what we can do is we can go to the trim tool and then we can trim the extra portion. So here I'm just trimming the bottom part out. I'm trimming this particular sides out. Okay, so that everything is all uh, correct. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a circle again from the origin. And this time the circle is going to be a little smaller. Okay, and as we can notice, the circle is going to be of radius 24. Now before I define the radius to this particular circle, I'm going to create a line, technically two lines, one from the right, one from the left. I'm going to trim this particular, you know, extra lines. I'm also going to trim the bottom part of the circle and then going to provide a diameter because the radius is 24, the diameter is going to be 48. Okay, otherwise you know how to create a radial dimension. If you so wish to create a radial dimension, you can definitely do that as well. But here I'm providing a diameter of 48. And now I have a fully constrained sketch. Now once I have it, I'm going to click on finish. Okay, and this is how my sketch is going to look like. Now I'm going to click on extrude. Okay, so this way I can provide it a little thickness. I'm going to choose symmetry. And if you're using any version which is lower than what I'm using, like if you're using NX12, uh, or let's say NX1853, uh, 1853, 1847, or any sort of those versions. So make sure the symmetry option is working in a proper way because here in my case, the symmetry option is I have to provide the direct value, for example, 46. But some of you have to provide the half value. Okay, so make sure you're using the software you're using, whether you need to provide the half value or the full value. So the overall value, what I want is 46. Okay, if your software need you to provide the half value, then provide 23. Okay, now here I'll click OK. And this is how I have created my sketch. Now, once my basic sketch is ready, I can hide my sketch. Okay, or basic, you know, model is ready. I can hide my sketch. Now I can focus about rounding this part from the side. Now to, now to provide the roundness to the side, I just need to know the radius that is 54. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a sketch again on the top plane. Okay, the default plane. I'm going to create a circle. Okay, uh, I'm going to provide this a radius of 54 or a diameter in this case of 108. So that is a radius of 54 again. Okay. Now I'm going to click on finish and I'm going to use a different technique this time. I'm going to click on extrude. Okay. And rather than choosing unite or subtract, I'm going to choose this option called intersect. Now what this option will help me to define is basically it will only keep the material which is there common between the two objects. So here if I choose intersect, this is what I'm getting. Okay. As a proper output. Now I am now going to decide to hide my sketch. Okay. The previous circular sketch. Now if your software doesn't have the option of intersect, you can just simply create two circles. Okay. One of diameter 108 and second one of diameter 120. And then you can just simply extrude it, you know, just subtract it. And that will work in even in a similar way. But here I'm just trying to simplify the things even further and, you know, try to give you extra knowledge about the things. Now here I need to create two holes, which are going to be of diameter 12. And we know the center to center distance between the hole is 78. So let us now try to create that as well. So for doing that, I'm going to create a sketch on this face because this is the point where I'm going to create my hole. And because it's a very simple diagram, I'm just going to create a circle of diameter 12. Okay. And we have successfully created a circle of diameter 12. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a horizontal uh, constraint from the origin to the center. And then I'm going to simply mirror this circle on the other side. And once I'm done that, done with that, now I'm going to define the center to center distance of 78. So that is what is required. Now, once I'm done, I can click on finish. I can click on extrude. So slowly, slowly we are taking the things further. Okay. And this time I'm going to choose subtract. And here you can choose if you want up to next. And here I'll click OK. So now my circle, circular part is also ready. And as you can notice, slowly, slowly we are taking the things further. Okay. So my circle is ready. My hole is ready. Now here I also have some sort of chamfers. Okay. On this particular side. 
Okay, so there is no value defined for the chamfer as I can see, as I can clearly understand. So what I'll do is I'll define a value of my own. So let us try to create a chamfer and let us try to choose this as a single curve, this one and this one. And I guess, I guess 0.5 will look fine for this, a symmetrical 0.5 chamfer for the bottom, this edge and this edge as well. So this is looking all good. Okay, now next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to now concentrate on creating the center hole. Okay, if you want, you can create the center hole with the hole command. Otherwise, you can also use extrude or revolve to get this particular hole ready. Okay, for me, it will be easier to use the hole command. So I'm going to use the hole command itself. Now to create the center hole, I need a point exactly on the top face. Okay, in the center of the top face. So there is an easier way to do that. Okay, which I'm going to show you in this case. And after that point is ready. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a hole, a counter bore hole from that particular point. Now first task is to create a point on the center of the top face. To do that, I'm going to click on curve. I'm going to select the point option over here. And here I'm going to select this particular option called point on face. Now once I choose point on face, I just simply click on the face. And to, pro to make the point in the center of the face, I'm just going to provide the U parameter value as 0.5 and the V parameter value as 0.5. So that will make sure my point is particularly in the center of the face. Now once I click OK, this is how the point has been located. Okay. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to see the dimensions of the hole. So there is a hole of diameter 6 and there is a counter bore of diameter 8 which is of depth 16. So let us provide the hole now. So I'm going to go to home, choose the hole command over here. Now because it is a custom hole, I'm going to choose counter bore okay, from this list and here I'm going to choose a custom hole and basically I'm going to select this point for the location of the hole. Now I'm going to define the hole diameter as 6 and the counter bore diameter as 8 but the value or the depth of counter bore is going to be 16. Okay, let's just confirm the value again. Yeah, the counter bore value is going to be 16 as you can see over here. Okay, in this particular part. Now, once I'm done with this, I'm all good to go. I'm just going to click OK. And this is how my hole is ready in the center. If your hole is not going all the way through, then what you can do is you can also make sure the depth value is set correctly. In my case, I've just set the depth value to 40. If you want, you can also choose up to next as a depth value. So that will also make sure the hole goes up to the next geometry. Now, finally, what I need to, to do next is somehow I need to get this particular arc of radius 17. And technically that is the easiest part. Okay. Now for doing that, I'm just going to simply choose this option called cylinder. If you want, you can use any particular option. Okay. I'm just trying to be a little different in terms of modeling. So here I'm going to choose cylinder. I'm going to choose this option called arc and height inside cylinder, or let's say axis, diameter and height, this particular option. Axis is going to be fine. It's going to be a vertical axis. It's going to go up. Okay. Uh, the point is going to be the center of this. Okay. The diameter is going to be double of 17. So 17 into two, that is what I'm going to enter over here. And the height is any value, no problem. And I'm going to choose subtract over here. Now, if I show you the result, this is how it's going to form. And if I don't subtract, okay, this is how the cylinder is going to look like. Okay. So just for your curiosity, I'm just choosing subtract over here, clicking OK. This is how I got this particular part. You can simply create a circle here from this center of the radius 17 and just cut it up. That will also give you the similar result. Now I can choose this cylinder. I can choose mirror this feature and I'm, go I'm going to mirror this feature from this plane and then I'm going to click OK. Now once I've done that, this is how the entire part, the cap part is going to get ready. Okay, so this is one of the basic engineering drawing which you have to create in most of the software. And this is how you can do it easily in an X. Okay, and by using this similar technique, you can also create the similar drawing in any different software you want to. So all the best for your future. Have a great day. Thank you very much for watching.